Our president is here with us. But before I check if it's time to bring him out, let me do a little small side talk. Because this kind of question they come out for Facebook well, well, especially in Facebook. And I don't say some people could have put me for Facebook life now. When you say take it back, they say, Can I What are you taking back? Can I take it back? For what will it go? You see, in Nigeria, our use of language is very, very fluid. True, take it back can mean a lot of things. But in our instance, we want to take what they took from us back. They took a lot. They even tried to take our dignity. A few days ago, a very important lady, wife of the president, gave us the theory of the two people. Those are the things we want to take back. You take it back to move it forward. So when they ask you, what are you taking back? We want to take all those things. Our education, they don't take it out from us. Agriculture, where it is. Our oil money, everything, including our dignity, that you will be ashamed to bring out to your great passport. Those are the things we want to take it back. But we cannot just take it back by word of mouth. You're not going to say, and of you do it on your own. Any translator? I don't go to school. Now, every school I go, my part of which I want to take back in that, so that I can go to this school. So that is the reason we are here. Uh, Mr. Hawaii, is Mr. President ready? Okay. So, those are the things we want to take back. No be fight. No be wahala. Some people go ask me, say, come on here, you get PVC. You don't get PVC, but you get people when you get PVC, when you feel influence. No be so we don't have a 2014 for them. No, so we influence people. Why do we not influence people? My own nephew, he asked me for money. I said, show me your PVC. He showed me PVC. Who did they vote? He said, ah, bros. I don't know, brother. I don't know, I don't know. 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 You are not buying his vote, so you are encouraging him to do the right thing. At least every one of us here. We have at least two people back home that we can influence. Even when you don't have PVC. When they say you don't have PVC, they that have the PVC, not the 4,000 and the seller. Abi? So you can influence. Apart from the folks who are donating to oil the engine, Pastor will agree with me that money is the what? Is the bicycle of evangelism. Abi? So, the, whatever you give your one dollar, your two dollar, your three dollars will help the movement. We are actually doing something. Omo Yane Shore has been to places no other living politician in Nigeria has been to to campaign. He has been everywhere. I saw him on the Kino. I said, oh boy, yeah. oh, that well. I have never seen any Nigerian politician going that way, that part of Cross River State. And this is the first time since the uh, Nigeria became a republic in 63, right? This is the first time in the history of Nigeria that we will have a presidential candidate with no baggage. Please give me a little round of applause. <laughs> That's the way no way to come and make come tell me. I did go here, I did tell you my name. Then they call me go away on Facebook. If you see that there, if you see any baggage, the first time when we go get candidates, we don't get baggage. They will say those ones. I don't want to mention them because I quit the best. They will say if you get baggage, you get in plenty. We go to go. But now we have a candidate that understand how it feels to be a common man. It is not, you know what you remember on a sour? That's where you don't enter. You know the best way you enter and you go wrong for what? It's not an asawa, a JJC kind of. It's been in activism. I see a photo of Taiwan in the FKO, but in that long, I see a different FKO back like this. 
That was 1994, 93, 94. He's paid at the forefront. He paid his dues. So when they pay, if someone pay their dues, don't they deserve some accolades? He deserves some accolades. He paid his dues, well, and that is why all of us in this room, we are rallying around him and supporting him. There is a lot to be done. And my mathematics is not good. My statistics can be wobbly at times. But I know for a fact that Nigerians in diaspora what we send home is more than the budget of that country. Am I right? I, don't, I can't tell you the exact figure. I don't want them to quote me and put me on Instagram blog. But I know for a fact that the amount of money we remit home here is more than the budget of Nigeria. We should have a say. So when you are getting your questions ready, I'm giving you what you we should be able to vote now. Are we? Our money is less. We don't vote. In Brazil, if you live in the diaspora and you're Brazilian, and it's election time, you don't go to your embassy to vote. You do it one time, second time, you are going to lose your citizenship to your own country. So Brazilians always vote. It's not uh, a right step. It's a duty that you have to do as Brazilians. But they don't think about us because they know we have seen both sides. We have seen how it is done for places where they get sense. I mean, we have seen it now, not in the place where they get sense today. And we have seen, we've seen it, they've seen it. But they won't take part, Agidi. They won't take, take, take a cover, copper. You don't say copper, and copper. And uh, Chile and uh, silver. Let the person take and take cover, copper, come call and shield it for you. Now, what do you mean for them with that? But that's okay. They give you Photoshop train, Photoshop human being, Photoshop this, Photoshop that. You don't even know what to believe again. So you have a job to do, sir. You have a job to do, man. If we are going to take it back, we go walk home. We go walk home. This is part of the world. Is Mr. President ready? <laughs> if you don't know, Jumeji is the official town crier of Take It Back Home. <laughs> okay. What do you do, everybody? I'm going to call everybody's name one by one. Number one. The presidential candidates of African Action Congress. On my initial word. And I also recognize Dr. Marco. Ms. Michelle is here. So is Ms. Doris Akitime and Mr. Ayo Akitime. Afolabi Obudolie. Tameka Adenunga, our very good sister. Thank you. Abiodu Belo. Pastor Ulure Nipadro, Ngozi Chuku, Mr. Tosi Ayebe, B. Adewako, Papa Tule Ola Neko, Oyinda Mola Ake Kukle, Pastor Belo Owolabi Lawa, Pastor Chayo Obi, Mr. Ayoachayi, Dr. Miki Utunuga, my own brother, Queen Esther Additional Alao, uh, at you. And I did not see Lola Ogitade's name here. Yeah, she's there. I know she's there. That's my baby sister. And my own is ever here. And ladies and gentlemen, they say, Mr. President is ready to come on. Could you please uh, get on your feet and welcome Omo Yale Show, the next president of Nigeria.
pass for all that have held our captive and oppressed for 58 years. And towards a new dawn of peace, progress, and development. This event is put together to raise money for the purpose of financially supporting the AAC presidential candidate, Comrade Omoyeni Shore. We are honored to have Comrade Omoyeni Shore, Dr. Malcolm Fabi, and Comrade Dr. Okuleye. All these three are powerful leaders of the AAC. Comrade Omoyeni Shore is the leader of the Take It Back movement, a human rights activist, and the presidential candidate of Africa Action Congress. His decision to contest for the presidency was born out of the people, out of his belief that Nigeria can work if the right leadership is put in place. His candidacy is supported by a well-grounded manifesto that despises it. Dr. Malcolm Fabi is the Director General for the Teddy Bar Movement and Show 2019 campaign. Comrade Batum Oguleye is the Director for the Teddy Bar AAC USC Shelter. Before I hand over my phone to MC, I want to say, once more, on behalf of the Bar, DF Shatter, welcome. It's wonderful to, to see you all here. Also, I want to use this opportunity, though I shouldn't be doing this right now. I just want to call my fellow and fundraiser committee to step on the podium so that we can be recognized. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Господи.
Majority of our countrymen and women are sometimes unable to read or write. But there is one thing that they can pick out. They will pick out a symbol. And the parties that have raped that country, one of them has a symbol of an ancient which is blue. Yes. It's a witch's blue. The other one has a symbol of what? An umbrella. How many people can go under one umbrella? Maximum two. How many people can go under one umbrella? Two. Okay, so we should not be surprised that when they get into power, they do what? They do things that only benefit themselves. Our symbol is two outstretched hands. Transparency, unity, oneness, love. Everything you can think about that is good about the human nature can actually be concretized and symbolized by two hands that are completely outstretched. So here's level two. Level two is when we say AAC, take it back. And when we say take it back, the action part of it, I want you to please give me your hands. AAC, take it back. AAC, take it back. Take it back, action. Thank you very much. Please sit down. It's, it's an honor and a privilege for me to be here. Uh, for those of you that are in the DMV area, if you don't know already, let me tell you this. That this journey began here in Maryland in March. The first town hall, the first town hall that was ever staged, right now, Joe has done over a hundred of these events. He has been to every single state in our country. He has been to over a hundred cities in Nigeria. He has been all over the world. But the first place where we had a town hall session was actually in Maryland. In March. And I think it is only fitting that before going back to Nigeria to finish the final leg of this incredible, improbable race, that we will come back here to Maryland, to the DMV area, so that we can re-energize him and re-energize the campaign and give him and the campaign everything that we need in order to be able to win this race. I have known Chore for about 30 years. There are people that have already spoken before me today. And there are a few things that I can tell you about Chore that you don't already know. But I will repeat them anyway because they bear repeating. I have never met a more courageous person. I have never met a person who is more who is just completely sold into the idea that Nigeria is worth dying for. I have never seen somebody who with the entirety of his being believes that his country can be a better place. Yes. Many of us started together with him as student activists. We all went out into our different careers. Shoren, not for once, never in everything he has done since 1989, in the early 90s when I met him, he has remained resolute, he has remained committed, he has remained unwavering in his fundamental belief that Nigeria can and will be a better place. And so it doesn't take too much to buy into that kind of vision. I will ask you a question. Chore is 47 years old. He's 47. And in the 47 years that he has been on earth, there have been a number of incredible things that have happened in our country. Momentous events. Events that have impacted and changed the trajectory of our nation. I make bold to tell you today 
that nothing has happened in that country in the last 30 years of our political history that Shogore was not involved in. Not as a bystander, but as a pivotal and a crucial and critical part of the process of moving that nation forward. And I'll give you a few examples. But I know I've been told to come up here and tell you about our party's program. But before telling you about the programs, every anytime anybody puts a microphone in my hand, I cannot help but tell you about the man that has birthed this vision, a man that not only set up a movement, but also created a political party. This is the first time in our nation's history. The first time in our nation's history that we have a political party that is based on an ideology. member of the political class in our country may tell you they are in one party today and nobody will be surprised if they move to another party the next day. Yes. Oh, We're all here in the US. If somebody tells you they're a Democrat, I don't need to know them. I don't need to meet them. I can tell you without meeting them at least 80 to 85 percent of what they believe about government, about welfare, about immigration, about the role of government in society. I can tell you what they believe without ever setting eyes on them. If somebody in this country tells you that they are a Republican, I can tell you without a shadow of doubt, I can tell you at least 80 to 85 percent of what they fundamentally believe about governance and government and the role of government in people's lives. Tell me you are a member of the ABC in Nigeria and I don't know what you believe. Tell me you are a member of the PDP in Nigeria and I have no idea what you believe. Because they believe in absolutely nothing. Yes! But we believe in something. We believe in something and that's why we're here. We believe Nigeria can, must and will be a better place. We believe we can transform that nation. We believe that every dream, Nigeria, like for, I'm 45 years old. I've always heard that Nigeria had potential. I studied science. If you don't move from potential to kinetic, you're going nowhere. So it is time for our nation to begin to move. And the man that will make us move is right here within us. I want you to know something. Today. All of you here today are going, you are marking history. Yes. This is not just an ordinary event. This is a historic event. You are sitting here with Nigeria's next president. We have a cardinal program. As soon as Shore decided he wanted to run, the first thing he did was to begin to pull a team together. And he began to describe his vision for Nigeria. And quite frankly, the point at which I knew something was different about this attempt at retaking our nation was when I saw the caliber of the people that were beneath, that were throwing their support behind him. As I speak to you today, there are thousands of volunteers around the world that are running social media platforms, that are crunching numbers, that are on the streets of Lagos and other cities around the country people that are doing fundraising, people that are writing articles, people, we have almost a hundred lawyers that are volunteers, just waiting for us to tell them that this is the case run to court. I have never, in all the time that I've been involved in Nigeria's political process, seen this type of selflessness from Nigerians. 
I have never seen this level of prosperity. I have never seen a political party or a political movement that is being funded by nobody but those of you that are sitting right here. Yes. The only reason why we are here today is because of your support. Without your support, we could never have gotten this far. Absolutely not. There is absolutely no way we could have gotten this far. So let me very quickly describe what our programs are. So we have 10 cardinal programs. But those programs are based on three pillars. The three pillars, and these were the things that Shore absolutely laid down in the beginning. Our three pillars are that every program that we institute for the Nigerian people must be one that guarantees their security. We cannot continue to live in a nation where herdsmen roam <laughs> rampant. We cannot continue to live in a nation where the name that you bear and the religion that you have, depending on what part of the country you are in, could be what leads to your death. We cannot continue to live in a nation where Boko Haram can decide to just drive four hours into a city, pick up ten girls, drive another four hours out, as if they are taking them on an excursion. Yet we have an army, we have a police, we have air force. And a ragtag army will, will just drive in and out and pick up our sisters, our daughters and our mothers at will. So the first pillar was that whatever programs we have must guarantee security. The second pillar was sustainability. That any program that we embark on as a party, as a movement, and as a government must be a program that respects the fact that this earth was given to us and that our job as stewards of the earth must be to make sure that we pass it on to future generations better than we met it. The third program, the third pillar of this 10-point program is self-sufficiency. And the reason why self-sufficiency is important is that every program that cannot sustain itself will die. If you have roads that can't sustain themselves, it will die. If you have power stations that can't sustain themselves, it will die. So security, sustainability, and self-sufficiency. And now we go to the program themselves. So our program is Spicer Heat. It's simple, you can remember it. The S stands for security. The P stands for power. Our goal is to move Nigeria from where it is today, at about 5,000 megawatts of generation capacity, to 24,000 megawatts of generation capacity within four years. It can absolutely be done. The I stands for infrastructure. The C stands for corruption. Corruption is a cancer that is killing our nation. One of the reasons why a lot of people voted for Buhari last time was because we hoped, we hoped that what happened between 1983 and 1985 might still be somewhere inside his blood. But it was clear that it was just a figurehead in 1983 to 1985. That there's absolutely nothing inside of him or inside the party that he leads that can move Nigeria out of its current corrupt state. Then there's E that stands for the economy. Our economy should not be where it is. We have 180 million people. It is an incredible market. If Nigerians sold nothing to anybody else but themselves, we ought to have an incredible economy. But where is our economy today? It's backward. Where is our economy today? According to their own statistics, we lost 5 million jobs between last year and this year. That is according to their own statistics. You know that the real numbers, you need to multiply that number that by, by some factors. Why should we be in a country that has 180 million people, have arable lands, and yet not be able to feed ourselves? 
Why should we be within the top five producers of oil? Yet we buy every single drop. We send oil to places like the US and China and then import refined petroleum products back. It's ridiculous. Why should we be in a country where our engineers, our scientists are doing incredible things in places like the US and in Canada and in Germany and everywhere else in the world? And yet, we cannot run an airline in our country? So, our fundamental belief is that Nigeria can do better. So the, e, the first E in Spicer Heat is for the economy and jobs. We are committed to creating about 5 million jobs within Shoale's first four-year term. And I'm sure there will be an opportunity today for him to describe what that program is and how we're going to implement it. And then the R stands for reconstruction. We have a nation that is not working for us. Our nation is over-centralized. There must be a devolution of powers. We must enable the local structures to work. On paper, there is quite a lot of power that is devolved to the local levels. The reality is it is still not being done. The political will is not there. And we have a plan and a program to make sure that that is implemented, that the spirit, that the true federal spirit and the federal nature of Nigeria will be implemented. We live in a federal system in the US. The laws in Maryland are different from the laws in Delaware. In theory, that is what Nigeria is. In practice, that is not what Nigeria practices. So reconstruction, ensuring that all the different federated units of Nigeria are able to express themselves and grow at a pace that matches the resolve and the creativity of their people, that is something that our movement and our party is committed to. The H is for healthcare. We live in a nation where even our president cannot afford to treat himself in his own country. He has a headache, he's in the UK. He has pain in his ears, he's in the UK. If your president cannot get healthcare in his own country, what hope does the common man have? We live in a nation where give, if you go there today and you say every Nigerian doctor could get a visa somewhere out of the country, we would have no doctors left. That shouldn't be the case. So one of the cardinal things we want to do is to ensure that Nigeria is a country where healthcare, whether it doesn't matter what your name is, it doesn't matter what part of the country you come from, it doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, every Nigerian will be able to afford and to access not just affordable healthcare, but quality healthcare. The second E stands for education. Every single person here, when I, when I look at most of you, a lot of us are people of a similar age. We all mostly went to public schools. I attended public schools. I met you already in a public school. But in today's Nigeria, if your child is not going to a private school, that child is not going to get a good quality education. So our fundamental goal is to ensure that in the Nigeria that the AAC births, in the Nigeria that Shore leads, it will be a Nigeria where the circumstance of your birth, the name that you bear, the part of the country you come from, the wealth of your parents or the lack thereof will not be something that will impact on the quality of the education that you get. The A in Spicer Heat stands for agriculture. Our goal within the party is to make sure that within the first four years we create at least 1,000 agricultural entrepreneurs in every local government. There are 774 local governments. It means we're going to be creating 774,000 jobs by simply enabling agriculture at the local level. Making sure they can get access to loans, making sure that they can get access to equipment, making sure that extension services are, are rejuvenated, making sure that we can have real private-public partnerships that can empower people at the local level, and ensuring that we create something that a lot of us that are in the States will identify with, which is the fact that small businesses are the engines of growth in any nation. A small business unit under the presidency, under Shogore himself, that will be directing things and making sure that 
um, empowerment of poor at the local levels. And then finally, the T in Spicer Heat is tourism. Nigeria is a beautiful country. It's an incredible country. People want to go to our country. A lot of times we're the ones telling our friends not to go yet because we are afraid for their security. But if people are jumping on planes to go to places like South Africa, wouldn't they want to go to our nation? If people are going to the Bahamas and the Caribbean, there are 20 Jamaicans just in Nigeria. The experience you will get from seeing the Dorba in Kaduna, or seeing the Arunbu Fishing Festival, or seeing the, the carnival in, the, in, in Calabar, it's incredible. We have a lovely and incredible nation. And so one of the things that we're determined to do is to make sure that not only tourism, but also culture is significantly empowered. So that is our program. It is spice the heat. We're bringing and the heat. It's spice the heat. And I can tell you this, that ours is also the only platform that not only tells Nigerians what we intend to do, Shores Manifesto is also the only one that tells you where we are going to get the money from yes. and how we are going to get it implemented. It has never been done. Everybody makes promises, but nobody tells us how they will do it, where they're going to get the money from, and then they get in and start telling us stories about how they do more money. Shore has these 10 programs, and if you read our manifesto, you will see very, very clearly not only what these programs are, not only where it's going to take Nigerians, but exactly how it gets paid for. Take it back! Action! Take it back! Action! Thank you very much. I forgot to mention that the food they won't come on and help. I don't know, me and the uncle, but I don't know that one. The food they there, there is no protocol when it comes to food. Please, get up, help yourself. The food is there, the drink is there. I give one question where I want to ask. Maybe Dr. Malcolm will feel answer me. Can you tell me how many hospitals we built in Nigeria in the past four years. Zero. zero. <laughs> Big fat zero. Like now we're going to put a mouth for school. They're not feeling big hospital. They send a bit to railway. Railway from Spain. Picture from Spain. Really in Nigeria. Oh my shit. We have some youngsters here. You know the entertainment industry is booming. In Nigeria is booming. We in the diaspora, we are not left out. We have two wonderful people there. They will show us some dance steps. And while we are doing that, please feel free, get some food, please. Are you ready? They are not ready. Huh? Give us some jokes. Okay, one more minute.
I had my first child in 1998. The senator representing my son, third generation, representing my son's senatorial district, Ife Jesha, senatorial district, was Mojisoluwa Akifewa Shayewonimuwa. That is why we have to take this thing back. They are already preparing their children in their ways. Their children in their ways. The same way you see Kuala, you see other states, you see. We don't want dynasty. We don't want dynasty. Uh, which office should we have hold before? Five. So he knows how it feels. That's why we are going to put people like that in office. One of us. Yoruba talk say, if you are very cool, carry me to take a juke yourself before you take a juke another person. You know? So if you pass through a road, you know how it feels, you're passing through that road. Having said that, I'm going to. Call on Mr. President. I am actually always excited when I'm in gatherings like this. It gives me hope. Yes. I lost that hope. Many people probably don't know I was a customer of Sign Nigeria for 16 years old. Wow. Hmm. Really? Wow. Yes. One, six. I was a customer of Sign. My last duty post was the anti corruption unit. Put the camera on my face, let people see. I did say AA is my name. I was the guard commander of enforcement and drugs headquarters at Buja between 1995 and 2000 and whatever. Uh, when did the passenger become? 1999. And I was security assistant to the number two in charge of investigations and inspections. My last post, that like I said, was anti corruption. When I saw that, actually, our name should have been Corruption with the Capitals. And that was why I left. Hmm. Then this is the crazy bit I left. I don't know if you for toilet in London. That is it. That shows you why we are doing this. We are not doing it for ourselves, per se. At least I can say that for everyone in this room. You are not doing it for yourself. Cousins, nephews, people around you. That's why you are doing this. You are okay. My second son is in the military. He's coming home on Tuesday. I don't have to worry about parents to fees. He's going to go to college. To any end he wants, I don't have to worry. So I'm not doing this for me. I don't even think I can stay in Nigeria more than 30 days at one time. I will be broke anyway. That's why I will run away. You can be dead more. You know? So, having said that, I'm going to call on Mr. President to give us a word. Then we will go to question and answer. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up to the next President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, one other that's significant was that 
I arrived in the U.S. February 1999, and exactly 20 years, February 2019, we are hoping and believing and convinced that we'll be elected as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And because as Malcolm told you here today, this was the first town hall meeting we had outside of Nigeria, somewhere around here, in March. So we're wrapping up here before the final move against the old cargoes in Nigeria, uh, which is going to happen as soon as we return home. One other significant thing that's happened to our movement, our party, is how you know that we are going to win. When you start as a movement to become a political party, and you are able to move around the country, including into enemy territory. But most importantly, when the authorities that are about to be kicked out of office become very jittery, that is 